Oh, you the voice? Nah, not me. So if you're not the voice, who is? The people, man. The people's the voice. So what does that make you? That makes me the middleman. I'm the middleman. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Middleman Podcast. I am the man in the middle, Kevin Martinez, and today I am joined with my boy, Soul. What's good, y'all? What's good? Oh, man, it's a pleasure having you here, Soul. You know, uh, you reached out on social media, you know. Uh, yes, sir. Getting ready to get people for season two. And, uh, you know, meeting people through social media is always a little bit like, it's you got to, like, feel them, gauge them out. You know, you have to be, have a pre-interview before you can do an interview, okay? That so. makes sense. <laughs> because... You know, we're coming to my home and everything like that. So you and I, you know, we were talking, and honestly, you seem like a brother, bro. You're a really cool dude. Um, Appreciate off rip, you, man. You know, so I'm happy to have you here, Soul. Happy to be here, man. Appreciate you uh, giving me that warm welcome. And uh, I could say the same exact things about you as far as, like, just energy and just letting people know, like, hey, look, it's good vibes off rip. Always. Good vibes. That's what we're here for. We're actually drinking Michelob Ultra right now <laughs> at 12, 12 p.m. okay it Big is not five o'clock and it is sunday as you can tell i'm representing my steelers okay but it is what it is man sometimes you gotta drink <laughs> i'm a jets fan and we're doing good this year but we got some concerns so i'm rooting for my team you're a jets fan so you definitely gotta drink too <laughs> you're not even wrong for that all right well let's jump into the music here we go uh you go by two names you know you have j la soul and you have astral soul you know and uh something that i that caught my eye was that two one the only thing that was consistent in it was the word soul you know so why the two different like names why the two different aliases as your artist name um ideally it was always going to be jayla soul and then my instagram kind of got hacked so i had to go mm. and switch up my instagram and now there's like that strange misconception occasionally that i'm astro soul so I can't, I can't knock it now. So it's like, so soul is what everyone called me. So like, mm -hmm. I'm so used to being called soul. It had to be a part of what was going on for the second time. I understand. I understand that. Yeah, keeping that consistency. And why? What is like so big about soul for you? What What's that about, man? Um. So, growing up with my grandmother, like in my grandma's apartment, like it was a lot of soul fulfilling. Like she used to play a lot of like just James Brown, some like old like. Old old stuff. I can't even name it because Ray Charles. Old. Ray Charles was there, yes, but like I'm talking like the Amy Winehouse. She'll she'll go back to like some '60s, like like smooth jazz. Like she'll do. She used to do so many different things with that with that that meaning of mm -hmm. soul. Like what 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 it, what it personifies. So okay. that's where where it kind of hits for me. Gotcha, gotcha. I like that. I like that. So like, when did you uh, start becoming like an artist? Like when did you start you know making music or even like thinking about it because it sounds like soul has been given to you even before you were an artist correct yeah 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 absolutely i mean you you kind of know when you feel soul, like you know like it just happens to be like there like there are days where you wake up and you kind of feel those out of body experiences mm -hmm. or, like you don't feel all the way like yourself that's that's you kind of listening to your, your inner self kind of right there like you trying to figure out what's gonna what's gonna happen for the next moment mm -hmm. you, it, it's, yeah it's a strange way to explain it but like that's just how it is like I get that, yeah. Like, every day you got to wake up and see how you're feeling, you know? Exactly. And, uh, you know, I, I always say, like, you should have to check on yourself first before you go check on other people. And it's a great quote, and it's a great mindset, and I'll be honest with you guys, I've been failing at trying to keep that mindset, bro. I really am, because I unfortunately wake up, and my alarm clock is my phone. My phone. You know, that shit flies right in your hand, Damn. and it fucks up the whole vibe, you know? I mean, they, like, don't get me wrong. Like, I wake up from an alarm clock too, so that I understand that shit. Like, it definitely. It's like, oh, what was on your Instagram notification? Maybe I need to put a do not disturb on. Maybe that's what I need. Um, if you put it on do not disturb, just know like you'll find more time for you and like what you actually want to invest your time in. Okay. That's like one thing I I kind of understood because I've never been super big on Instagram or like social media for that matter. But like, I know how to get a presence if I need to. Yeah. Okay. So it's like understanding how to step away from the Instagram and like the Twitters and the YouTubes and all that other shit is good for like your inner self. Like it's just good for you to figure that out. Like I have a friend, he hopped off at all of all of social media for like a whole year straight. Okay. Just, yeah. just did it just because he felt like he wasn't right inside. So mm -hmm. he hopped off everything and that's, and I, and he feels, he feels better. Like a lot of shit in his life is going great now. Like shout out to him. Yeah. You feel me? More but, power to you. Like, he, I've done I've done that. I've done that. Not not yeah. to the extent of a year. You know, I think I may I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. It was either three to six months. I really don't know. Hey, okay. look, 
any amount of time that's longer than two months is, is a solid is a solid effort. It was great, dude. I loved it. You know, so and it was exactly. during it was during COVID as well. You know, so like. I, there was really nothing much going on in the social media feed. It was always the same shit, right? So I ended up deleting it because you see a lot of negativity because of what was going on with the pandemic and shit like that. Yeah, absolutely. Um, See, so yeah, I deleted it, and, dude, I felt fantastic. Like, I loved it. I was like, yo, this <laughs> you is You stopped great. thinking about how crazy the world is outside yeah. mm-hmm. and started thinking about, am I saying? Yeah, I'm good. All yeah. right, yeah, nah, we straight. That's all I need to know. <laughs> like, that, that, that was the mindset right there. Yeah, 100%, man. And then when I came back, it's like, well, you... It's like you and I, right? We we are creators, you know, and uh, you know we need to be big on consistency and having to use social media. Like you said, you might not be big on social media, but you know how to get the engagement on social media if you needed to. Right. You know, you have to put out this content. It's like, damn. Like sometimes every creator probably goes through it. Is like, yo, I don't want to fucking do this shit today. Like I just don't want to in- engage and and talk to these people. I'd rather unplug and For keep the people to myself. who don't understand. Yeah. Everything you just said is a thousand percent facts. Like. It is so hard sometimes just to wake up and be like, yo, I got to sit here and find a way to entertain the world. <laughs> like, yeah, that is a, put like, that's a different way to like, like, I know it's a, it's a strange way to put it, but like, it's the reality. Like, we, you guys like to be entertained and we want to be the ones entertaining you guys. So we have to wake up with these kinds of things on our minds in order to get to the points where everyone is satisfied. A hundred percent. Yeah, you're right. You, we got to entertain these people. And Absolutely. it's like, how, what, what type of new content? You know, every day. I got a new idea. Like, oh shit! Like tea time. You know, we mentioned tea time. Yeah, tea time. Yeah, like right. that was that was developed that was in, in two moment. days. Yeah, that was in the moment. Like it was just a conversation. Like, and now it's it's something that we could hope hope to keep it going. Oh yeah, it's gonna be great, man. I love it. Sponsorship, Arizona iced tea. Check it out. Come on, tag me in it. Big you know, Arizona. Man. Big Arizona fan. For a dollar, nine, not even for ninety nine cents. <laughs> Unless you're in Canada, it's like a dollar twenty nine. Um, so, little backstory, okay, um, that I found kind of interesting is like when you and I booked our show, right? Mm-hmm. Um, one of my really great friends, his name is Zach. Was, right, okay, right, right. Uh, Z Visions, check him out. Great photographer, videographer. He's out there doing his thing as Philly, you know? Um, but yeah, he was like, I know Soul. And he called you Soul too, now that I think about it. He did call you Soul. He's like, Oh, I know Soul. I was like, You know Soul? He's like, Yeah, bro. That's my dog, man. And it's, it's crazy because it's like, it's a small world because you and I went out the same college. So I went out the same college with Zach too. I just didn't. It's like, we never really bumped into each other. It's a glitch. Yeah. It's a glitch, bro. This was supposed to happen one day, right? At some point, right. <laughs> and it's like, it's crazy because it's a glitch in life. You know, it's a simulation theory. This was meant to happen. Like when you like, it's literally like being in the same room with someone and just not realizing that y'all are in the same room until y'all walk out. Exactly. <laughs> So that kind of stuff. I I just wanted to throw that out there. I thought that was pretty cool. You went to Northampton, so did I. I graduated with an HVAC degree. You know, it is what it is. But hey, look, a degree <laughs> is a degree. I unfortunately didn't graduate, but okay. I figured it out. You feel me? Of course, bro. Fuck graduation. It was important. It wasn't even. It wasn't even happening, bro. It was an online shit. But anyway, let's get oh, let's shit. get back to your music, okay? So I was checking out your social media, right? And um, I was checking out in particular J La Soul because unfortunately that was hacked. But your pages, your your quotes, everything is still up there, right? Absolutely. So like one of the things that I saw was uh, backpack backpack rap. Yes, backpack rap. Backpack what what rap. is that? Is that something that you're still a part of? That is, uh, it's, 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 it's no longer a form group anymore, but that was a group that I was, like, really invested in, and that's mm-hmm. kind of how, like, I built into being so, you know? Like, that was a, a strong foundation into helping me develop into the artist that I am. Okay. So, it was a lot of uh, groundwork, but now we actually represent ABE, which is the area, but it also stands for Ambition Breeds Excellence. So that's the brand that we're pushing right now. And uh, it's, it's me, my man Terrence, who was also a part of Backpack Rap at one point. He's now the the president of uh, ABE, and I'm the vice president. Oh, no shit. Yeah. So wow. That's, uh, like I said, we, we figured some things out, man. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, how big is your team? Is, uh, it, is it, What was your buddy's name? I'm sorry. I don't start with the T. Uh, Terrence Lamont. Terrence, Terrence Lamont. Terrence, okay. He's also an artist. So his idea kind of, like, his, his idea was his own separate idea, but, like, the reason he was a part of backpack rap and the reason backpack rap existed was to ideally help understand and build artists to be what they become. So it was a few of us that kind of came from that backpack rap. Is that like talk about what you carry on your back? Was that kind of like a thing going on there? Like, um, you know, when people say reaching it, you're in your bag, you know, you're talking about some real shit. I don't know. That's just what I thought. So, about. Well, that, that, that's a dope way to look at it. The, the goal is was was it was to build lyricism within the hip hop community. OK, so whether it be a small branch of where you are. So our area was the ABE. So we help or like not really help, but we met people and like just showed them like, hey, look, like we started off trying to like write, too. So we have mm-hmm. to 
kind of like went through those mentorship teaching lessons and stuff like that. That's so awesome. That was kind of how we built up the artistry behind Backpack Rap. Backpack Rap ended up being, it was a really dope process. I'll, I'll say it like that. Mm -hmm. And now you're a part of ABE, which, uh, what, what does that mean again? Something Ambition breeds excellence. Ambition breeds excellence. And <clears throat> how long have you been part of that? Uh, so I, my bro hit me last year and was like, he was like, yo, I want you to, I want you to like help, help be that, like help put us where we need to be. Mm -hmm. So I said, all right, yeah, let's gear up. And I, I'm, I'm, this is me getting, getting back in the mode. Like let's gear up. We threw a show for my man, Figgy Fargo. You can check him out too. I, I threw a show for him in the ABE area. It was a dope show. I uh, had a lot of footage, a lot of feedback. Where is ABE area? Like where? It's like an hour out. Um, it's an hour basically from everywhere. Okay. So I don't even know how to explain. It's kind of like we're we're like we're in Scranton. Scranton's north a little bit from where I'm at. Okay. Yeah. You're like in Allentown, Bethlehem area. Yeah, that area. Allentown, Bethlehem. Okay. Right, and it's like, <clears throat> oh, AB. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton. You okay. Can say Emmaus, if you want. Yeah. Yeah. That like. And that's kind of just like your your guys have like a region there where you guys go to like different venues and perform or well or that's just... the goal right now. So we're just letting everyone kind of build the construct of themselves and stuff like that. I can't give too much sauce because you know people okay. is listening. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. Sorry. Nah, nah, nah. You're good. <laughs> but over overall, like we 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 do a lot as far as just trying to keep building the city up. I like that, man. I like that, and I thought about like backpack rap, and I I. I Thought a rap pack, you know. I don't know if you know rap pack. Yeah, I know rap you know, pack. Those, those are my boys. <laughs> no cap, I fuck with rap pack. Those are one of my favorite artists. Oh, word. Yeah, Dang. legit. All right, cool. So, um, yeah, let's let's keep talking about your music here. Um, where was your first performance? Um, my first performance was actually in uh, what do you call that? It's over on South Side. It's not the same. It used to be a part of the Sands Casino. It's a uh, Arts Quest. Okay, it was in Arts Quest. <clears throat> And it was like a good like 150 people there. It was, it was really yeah. It was it was cool. It wasn't too many. It wasn't like big like like super big. Like they was all spread out because it's a big area, so it didn't feel like there were that many people. But yeah. when you looked around and think about it, it was that many people. That's awesome. So it was cool. Like I mean, I like they was there for the headline. So like we performed like two acts before them. So that was my first like chance to perform. That's awesome, man. And yeah. how was that experience, man? You were probably like all nervous, um, correct? Probably fired up too, though. I wasn't really even like fully understanding the circumstances that I was in, cause like I was growing up, I was real like like conscious of myself, like a timid kid, like kind of thing. Okay. Like I wasn't like super scared or anything or anything, but like I was always within my own thoughts. Okay. So like I would say things that I wouldn't think would be as great, and then uh, like other people, I needed other people's validation at that point in time in my life to kind of like understand what like oh what i'm doing kind of thing like okay like yeah i'm writing music but like i don't know if this is actually like is this good for y'all like is this is it, like am i just saying words and y'all just reacting because i'm saying words like yeah i didn't understand how how it was working for me at that point in time so it's still very new very green it, to the game exactly mm -hmm. and so. that's that's great that you say that you know because with time comes like the development and then you don't even need that words of affirmation from like the other people you know you just develop that within yourself and that's kind of how i feel about myself as of as of lately within like my life as of now like so it's great to like you said just grow on the aspects of music that some people don't talk about yeah you know like a lot of people talk about like the depression portions but you know why this depression because there's no more people taking time to build the artist Okay. Like yeah, they shoot them up to fame, or they just like try to skyrocket them, and then they get lost in the sauce real quick. There's no one trying yeah. to teach them anything. There's no one trying to help them even just be better at their craft. Like those those skill sets, those mindsets, those are all gone. And the ones that we do have are like kind of sadly dying off. Mm -hmm. Like that's just what it is. Yeah. No, that's a great way to look at music. That is a great way to look at music because sometimes it's like they're pushing all the negative stuff out. You don't necessarily want that. Not not always, you know, and just uh, be able to self-reflect within yourself. Always know that you got your own back. That's huge. You know, that's yeah, real huge. Absolutely. You need that. Everyone needs that. Absolutely. You know, um, so I was looking at some of your songs. Right. And uh, excuse me, not, we're not even going to talk about your songs. Yeah. I still want to talk about venues and where you perform. I saw you performed on uh, a rooftop bar. That shit looks pretty dope. Oh, yeah. That was in New York. That was a rooftop performance. Uh, I did. I actually did that like two more times. But. The second time I was on crutches. 
Oh, really? <laughs> so, yeah, the second time is way funnier. Um, just because I was on crutches, like. Have, like you gotta that's commitment man. bro hey look i i wasn't really i, I wasn't really thrilled to be there <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> you know like everyone wanted to go to new york and i'm like shit i could kind of miss this like but i i rode out for the gang you feel me yeah for my yeah. friends with your broken leg with my broken leg right and i was like all right <laughs> y'all, y'all gonna get me there I, i'm not driving like and they got me there so i was like shit <laughs> so you're on stage with a crutch and a microphone it doing was, your thing like nah I, so originally I was supposed to have a whole set and I was like, I'm not doing a whole set with crutches. With crutches, <laughs> yeah. Like Would you do it in a wheelchair? Nah, nah. Oh, nah. okay. I, mean, I just had crutches. Sometimes there's differences, you know. I mean I I do a performance in a wheelchair, fuck it. I think I would do a, a <laughs> if, if they give me a whole set for and I'm in a wheelchair, I think I'd do it. Yeah, right. Have your homie fucking, yo, we going this way, that way, you know, going back yeah, and forth. Work the stage, like we out here. <laughs> And now we're going to go that way. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> See, I like, I'm uh, I'm going to be doing stand-up comedy. And uh, it's something that I've done in the past, right? I've done it like three times. Um, small crowds, right? Uh, I think the biggest crowd was probably like maybe 30 to 40 people. Right. Um, but yeah, I would definitely do a show in a wheelchair. I think that would be, but it'd be kind of fucked up too. Because it's like, yeah, I'm, not, like I'm not crippled at all. So that, that'd be like really fucked up. And it'd be like, is this guy mocking? Oh, you mean like you you would just do a regular show in yeah, a wheelchair with, yeah. no, with nothing wrong with you? Yeah, with nothing wrong yeah, with you. Nah, I'd have a homie. <laughs> <laughs> There's some handicapped dude somewhere around like, 100%. I'm going to get him. Terrible <laughs> jokes. But sometimes the terrible jokes are the ones that go far. Hey, look, okay? sometimes, man. I hope all handicapped people are like really not mad about this. <laughs> I'm sure they won't be. Right. Um, so do you have like a dream venue? Like, uh, you know, where you want to be? Or is it not really the venue, but more so the amount of people that come to the shows? Honestly, I stopped looking at all that kind of stuff. Like, I, I, I've I, done enough within, like, my own, like, town that, that makes me feel secure about my music. Like, and even, like, outside of my town. So I don't know if I'm going to mess up a few of the questions or not, but, like, I've lived in other places. So, like, I was born in New York State to, to about 12, 13, and then I moved to uh, Virginia. So, like, I have a strong fan base, strong f- friend group, strong family base kind of system out there as well. So, like, th- like there's a lot of love for me, like, in different areas. So mm-hmm. that's that's the kind of energy that I feel like I've always been able to get in my life kind of thing. Yeah, I like that, man. That's awesome, being able to go. Yeah, I was going to ask you where. So you were born in New York? Yeah, I was born born and raised for the most portion of in my life in New York. Okay. And then after that, I moved to Virginia. It was like fifth, sixth grade. It was sixth grade in New York, fifth grade in Virginia. The weirdest shit I ever experienced in my life. <laughs> I swear to you not. Why? I, Why was it weird? <laughs> because, like, how the hell was I in sixth grade? Now you're going to tell me I'm in fifth, but I'm passing. Oh. Yeah, but, like, I'm passing all this stuff. And, like, the, it's, like, the same shit I just learned to pass last year in That's New York. That's annoying. So, like, it was, yeah. like, the, the transfer of schooling was, like, was hell, like. But outside of that, man, like it was, it was, it was just, it was. It's a lot of love from uh, those those areas that I that I like to uh, keep keep on uh, feeding to. And now Allentown, Bethlehem, that's kind of where your hub is now. Right, Allentown, Bethlehem, Easton, that's where my hub is right now. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Um, I saw like you had a, a lot of custom gear for yourself. You know, I saw in some of your photos. Yes, sir. Um, work, could people shop for those, or are um, they one of one? They're they're not one of one per se. Uh, as of right now, those are actually things that I'm still actually getting in the process of like yeah. up and running. Mm-hmm. So I will drop a bomb. I'm going to have a little website just to make sure the shop will be consistently there for, for people who do want to invest in like all, and understand all the money will go towards like the back end for music. So like everything that you do will be appreciated and also reciprocated within my music. Yeah. So, like for anybody who, who who appreciates and like wants to follow on that strongly, like that's just what. That's just what I plan on doing with everything. Some people won't give people, like I said, that back in knowledge. Like they'll just think, oh, well, he pocketing the money. I'm not gonna pocket none of it. I'm gonna use it just to help get my music more out there for people like you. Yeah. You feel me? No, I like that. That's how it should be. Absolutely. You know, it's absolutely. Like, plus, you thank you for uh, supporting and believing me and uh, buying some of my merchant. And um, oh, you know, yeah, it's gonna go. It's gonna go all towards the back end of. I'm the same way with the podcast. Absolutely. Like if some, I I do have a. I created a donation page, you know, and it's it's simply titled <laughs> "Can I Hold a Dollar?" You know, so. <laughs> but That's it's fire. like it's like yo, if someone wants to give me a dollar. Thank you, you know, because production costs money. You know, these lights, everything like that costs money, and it's just like I, I want to. I, I have written right here an upgrading podcast. Like I'm I'm trying to upgrade shit as we go. Like my I just I put this guy up here today because I'm like fuck it, it's pretty relevant as to who I am, right? 
So Word, spaced out. <laughs> That's fire. You know, um, thank you, Nicole. She got me that for Christmas. Um, <laughs> and uh, but anyway, it's just like trying to upgrade the set. Like this plant wasn't here last time, but the plant's here now. You know, fucking, uh, I need a tablecloth. I need to buy one. You know, okay. Um, stuff for the background. So anything like that, anyone feeds into me or feeds in, yeah, just feeds into the podcast. It's gonna go towards the podcast. Yeah, look, you know, man, as it should. You get a, you get a. Tablecloth with your logo on there, man. Yeah. See, look now, 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 now you're looking Girl, something. That shit will look fire. It changes the whole aesthetic right there. There's a big poster right behind you on the left there. It's my logo, but it did come out a little funky, so we never uh, hung it up. And plus, it was like a test run, so like I just never got back to homie who was doing it. Okay, you know things. You know life happens, and it's okay. You know? Like no funny shit, man. I could. I'm gonna. Sh- I'm gonna show you some shit off off, off camera. <laughs> as okay. As far as like um like. Getting getting the flop. Getting like, vinyl prints like yeah, that? Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah, that's perfect. I'm I'm definitely down. Yeah. Um there's this one sweater that you were wearing though, and it was fire and it's been bugging me all day, bro. Okay, because it's uh it's a character. I know it's an animated character from I believe he's a fighter. It's the triangle. It's it's a triangle, the character in the center, and then it says Astro, I believe. Um Oh, um you talking about Astro Boy. Is that who it is? I believe it has so. to be, yeah. No, nah, that wouldn't Hold make on, sense. Wait, which yeah. one are you talking Go about? Go ahead on your Instagram, check. we'll pull it up. But which, like, which Instagram? The, the, the uh, I think it's on Astro. If I'm being honest. All right, cool. Um, because my buddy Mike and I were doing our research, right? And like, I'm like, yo, I know this character. <laughs> Just, yeah, Astro Boy. Yeah, yeah, Astro Boy. That hoodie is fire. Appreciate that, that hoodie man. is fire. I would love to get that. You know, yeah. so. Um, yeah, that's that's it, man. I, when you build your website, you know, let me know, and I'll definitely want to support it. Just you oh, know, word. it's Absolutely. likewise, bro. One hand washes the other. You know, you ever want to come and perform? I know people who put on uh, shows all the time. You know, yeah, definitely. I'd definitely be interested in December twenty third. Like man, see, pull the trigger, December twenty third, oh, next Friday. What's up? I mean, I <laughs> um, could come back out here. It ain't nothing but an hour. It, no, it'd be in uh, Toby Hanna. In Toby Hanna. Yeah, it'll be in Toby Hanna, and this video will come out after, so that we'll record the performance. And if you're there, because Mike, uh, our wonderful cameraman here, all is right. planning on being there and recording the whole thing, and I'm gonna be doing some comedy there as well. Oh, say no yeah. more. Yeah, yeah. So it's just like, let's do yeah, it, man. Nah, I'm all for <laughs> it. It's gonna be fun. I got some songs I want to perform to. I I would love to actually show y'all some songs too. Like I show I show like a song or two that I plan on actually releasing yeah okay some, and maybe not soon but at some point you know what um we can definitely uh plug that in we could just plug in the audio if you want to give me the audio file i could just plug it in right. and like we'll be like hey we're gonna take a break <laughs> listen you know stuff like yeah. that you know that's what we'll do uh but yeah to for sure i'm definitely looking forward to it right, um yeah. because i don't think it's gonna sound good if we just hold it up like this you yeah, know, nah, on the phone nah. with the microphone it just won't sound good it probably sound crazy yeah <laughs> <laughs> it really would um but yeah so astral soul uh, J La Soul, um, you know I, I noticed that you were big on family as well, um, yeah. you know, and you mentioned your grandma, so that all made sense. It all you kind of just knocked yeah. that question out the window, you know. But I could really appreciate that. And then there was just this, like one photo, and I was so confused because the caption, not confused, but I was in, intrigued by the caption mm-hmm. because it was you like freestyling. You were just like it was a photo of you, and it was captioned, uh, "The Spirit of Eli." Ah, uh, yeah. Can you can you elaborate on that uh, description you have there? So that was like all concept built. So Elijah is my middle name, and my grandma used to always like she she had moments where she would like bring up like the book of Elijah and stuff like that from okay. the, from the Bible and stuff. So she always used to tell me about that, and like that was one of her her big things. So like it all like one day I was just thinking heavier like some concepts so I just put that there like the spirit of Eli you feel me like yeah. I don't always use my middle name I really don't I even like say it too often so like people who listen and now you know who I am yeah like you know like but yeah like that's where that kind of came from that's where that thought process came from at least like that was the start of something like, I like it I maybe like I'll it. double back for it maybe, maybe not but like it, it, it was definitely like like you said it was just a little moment like it just kind of glitched in my head like Oh, word, the spirit of Eli. Well, the spirit of Eli, if you Google it, um, my buddy and I, we Googled it earlier. It, mm-hmm. I, I can't remember. I'd have to pull it up, but I'm pretty sure it was like about two brothers. Mm-hmm. And the one brother, Eli, chose to go against something. Against you know? something and the other one didn't, right. Yeah, it was. In, and that's what I was like, that's pretty deep. Yeah. I was like, all right, well, then. Um, and that's something that I noticed within like the way you, the way you uh, make your music, the words you say, you're a lyricist. You mentioned yeah. it, you mentioned it already. You already said, yeah, I'm a lyricist. You know who you are. You know what yeah, type yeah, of artist absolutely. you are. You got bars, you know what I mean? Absolutely. But, and it's like, you do a lot of play on words, you know, you do, I, I call it alliteration. You know, I don't yeah. know if that's really the right word for it. Um, alliteration is more like Apple's acting always 
eight. Okay. Yeah, there. That's, that's alliteration. Well, the then explain days. this bar here. Right, <laughs> explain this bar right here, okay? Because um, you sent me one of your songs. It was called Self Love, and this okay. was one of your slower songs. You yes. know, it was uh, Deep Vibes, and I was like, yo, this fucking lyric is nuts, right? So here we go. It's just me and my soul, soulless, is truly my sole purpose. Okay. It's just me and my soul, soulless, is truly my sole purpose. You saw right. you did soul, soul, soul? Yeah. What do they call that? <laughs> Um, so the play, all right, so that's, I did do alliteration. Yes, that, that was, okay. yeah, that okay. was alliteration. Okay. Yes. But I also did like, it was a play on words. Like you said, it was showing off the word play. So, um, my soul as in S O L E, like my sole purpose is, uh, soul searching. Here, I have, Wait, I have it for you. I have it for you. I forgot how I said it. It goes, uh, it's just me and my soul, soulless is truly my sole purpose. Okay. It's just me and my soul, so mm-hmm. that's me, and, and like you know, like my my inner self, like just me understanding, like that's like it starts with me. Gotcha. And then, soulless, is like a place of comfort. That's the meaning of soulless. Yeah, I had to Google that one. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty crazy. Yeah, that was like, pretty crazy. It's, 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 <laughs> the 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 Google definition is comfort or consolation in time of distress or sadness. Yes, it's yeah, truly like, my sole purpose. Yes, because like. In times of sadness, like, you got to find moments where you could find comfort. Like, a lot of the times when, like, when I wrote that song in particular, like, I could pull up a clip that my, or I could have you pull up the clip. I'll send it to you. My friend said, uh, was asking me about self-love, and, like, I don't think I could say it any better than how I said it in the clip, so I'll send it to you. Okay. But, like, it was pretty much asking me, like, what did that mean to me? Like, that kind of, like, what was the purpose of me making that song? Because I wasn't going to I wasn't gonna drop that song. Mm. Like, that song was just never going to, like, I don't know what made me release it. Like, uh, it was after that conversation, though. Yeah. So it was, like, those kind of, like, those kind of moments and, alter, like, just, like, someone actually wanting to understand where I was coming from made me release that song. And uh, as far as for that bar in particular, like, I was just in a moment, like, in, in, a, in a fucked up space. Like, yeah. so I was like, yo, like, what am I like? What am I looking for right now for myself? And it was self love, like so. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of what I got for me. When did you write that song? Do you remember how long um, ago? Because if you had it in the vault, you just didn't want to release it. It was probably a while shit, back. I couldn't even tell you. It was like probably like four, four, three, four. Three, four years. Yeah, three, four years. Nice. All right. Well, yeah, I do. I do. That was probably one of my favorite songs. Yeah, wow. that right, was probably right. one of my favorite songs. I, I do like a little bit of a slower vibe, but you know, not, nonetheless, there are other great songs as well. I went right. on your SoundCloud as well, um, and on your SoundCloud, I noticed again, soulless, the same word again. There's a whole song dedicated to that word, absolutely soulless, and I'm like, damn, bro, I'm like, this guy's deep. <laughs> you know what I mean? And uh, no, I I did like soulless as well, and Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost. Um, it was Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. Yeah, that one was pretty deep as well. And I'm like, as I'm listening to your music, I'm like, you are a deep artist, man. Like, you really do look within yourself, in my opinion, you know. And yeah. I feel like everything that you're saying is coming from the heart and the truth. Absolutely. And whether or not it's actually happening to you, I think I couldn't tell if it was actually happening to you. Like, if some of the things that were you were saying were happening to you, or if you were just putting it out there for someone else to hear, if it was happening to them. So, if that makes sense. So th- the reason I write in that kind of construct is because I want everybody to have those questions that I have for myself sometimes, you know? And it's also letting people know, like, I'm not excluded from anything that you go through on a day-to-day, even if you do see me as, oh, this is, like, one of my favorite artists, or even if you do see me as, oh, that's J. La Soul, like, I'm still a human, like, you feel me? Like, we still yeah. are people. Like, we still live lives. Like, mm-hmm. like I'm, I'm still working. Like, you feel me? Like, once I once I hit a point where I could stop working, then I'll let y'all know that. But <laughs> <laughs> until that point happens, like, I'm still working. Like, we're still figuring things out. Oh, what's going yeah. on? Oh, I'll ask you a question. So, there's a rap group called De La Soul, right? Yes, sir. Are you a fan of De La Soul? I am a fan of De La Soul. Okay, I just want to know. Trap yeah. Quest too. Yeah? Yes, All sir. Right. I just want to know because, you know, J. La Soul, De La Soul, you know, I was interested. So the De La Soul, uh, J. La Soul, uh, uh, like a comparison. Uh, Truthfully, I don't think there's really any, uh, like, musically, like, music-wise comparison as far as, like, we we sound and make totally different music. But the inspiration portion is, like, just understanding, like, he probably has a similar feeling to the, or attachment to that word soul like I do. You yeah. know, like so, uh-huh. like if 
there's ab soul you feel me like there's, yeah. there's there's multiple different souls you feel me but those are all different people who under who who f- probably found out about themselves just like I'm learning about me. Like, yeah, you feel yeah, me? Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. so that's, that's, just, it, it's a dope comparison. And I definitely like, I did that with the, with the meaning and hope that that would be one of those kind of conversations, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was interested. It was cool. Great question, bro. Great question. Yeah. Good one. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> um, yeah. So then, you know, uh, like I said, I I valued you. I have have it right here in my notes. Lyrics, it's a hundred percent. You know, I'm like this guy. This guy gets spit bars. But then he did another alliteration, which was in the song rotation. Which oh yeah. rotation, and it's within the chorus. Okay, but there's like the last. There's one word that I wasn't able to like make out while I was listening to it. So maybe you could tell me what it is. Been in rotation like a ceiling fan. Air them out all night, and they still a fan. Out of baggage, but I bagged it in a. And then you say something. And the still a fan. Still a fan. What is that? So I. <laughs> what is that? So I used to, you know, do my do, and my man's was smoking cigarettes. And okay. <laughs> hop. I was like, yo, I'm out of baggy. Nigga said, yo, take this. Popped open the cigarettes. Drops. Oh, drops the cigarettes in his hand. He drops the cigarettes in his hand. Takes the bag that was holding them. I'm like, yo, what the fuck is this? <laughs> like, I had the same reaction, right? Like, what the fuck is that? Oh, this is a fan, bro. What the fuck? Why am I handing somebody that in this? Like, nah, I'm not doing that. That's crazy. Yeah, so it was it was one of those kind of How do you emotions. do you know how to spell that? Because I don't. Right. Um, I don't even know. I want to see what it I, looks I, like. I, <laughs> I looked it up. I ain't gonna lie. I had to I had to learn how to spell that one. I was like, it's like it's it's weird. I can't spell it off my head. You, you have yeah, no, nah, that's crazy because it it's like weird words. here. You want to read that bar? Because honestly, I think you you would say it a lot better than I did right there. Which one? Uh, Where it says rotation. Oh yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, been in rotation like a silly fan. Air them out all night and they still a fan. Out of bag, so I bagged in the silly fan. That's just crazy. I was like, yo, that's fucking crazy. I'm like, that's, and you have a good flow, bro. You do. You know, I get I can see the flow whenever you you start rapping. It's just like. It's not like you're over here reaching the highest of all notes, but you're hitting it on the same time consistently. You know what I mean? You're hitting the same. I don't know. Maybe the 808 is that what they call it. Um, sometimes I find I follow the 808. Sometimes I follow like the the. I like to follow like some of the weird shit. So if I hear like a synth a synth or some shit like okay. that in there, I try to follow that. Like I, I like I like to throw my my pace on different like portions of the beat because I know everybody else is doing it. Everybody else is going to find the tempo that they like within the beat and throw themselves on that. So I'm going to find mine and throw mine there. Awesome, man. Awesome. It's like everyone everyone thinks different, you know? Yeah. And when you collab with different artists, you know, because you have a few songs where you collab with different people. Yeah. Um, are, do you always go in a studio with these people or have you ever worked with someone like where it's like you send them an audio file and they'll be like, yo, I want to get on this? I've done the sending audio files and stuff like that. I don't mind it. Uh, that's definitely cool. Like, I don't mind sending out files to people and stuff. The issue is with sending files sometimes, it just depends on like, you got to really know who you're sending it to, like kind of thing. Like, if I send it to you, is it was turnover time? Like, am I going to yeah. wait long? Like, if I'm not waiting long, I dope. Like, even if I do wait long, like, all right, we got the communication on point. You feel me? Yeah. So as long as, like, things like that is on point with me, like, I'm always for it. Like, and, and yes, like, there is a price. Like, yeah. just, just so people do know, yes, there is a price. I'm a writer. I write for people as well. I've wrote, I've written for people. I've helped a few artists get their names in good situations. Yeah. So there's a price. <laughs> Love is love, though. Yeah, it, uh, and that's what people got to understand, bro, <laughs> is that is there love, is a though, price. Right? <laughs> it's a price, but love is love. You know, like, I'm not, if, if I'm charging you a price, I'm going to treat it like the utmost certainty. I'm going to treat it like it's my own verse. Yeah. But a lot of the times, I'll write my own verse, and then if I really feel like it's that hard, I might auction that for sale. Oh, really? Okay, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah sometimes. Like, you, like, it just happens that way. Like, Yeah, that's all right. You know, yeah. everyone has, it's like you're, you have so many different avenues when you're an artist, right? You could do so much. You could write for people. You could write for yourself. You could perform for yourself. And you can have other people perform what you wrote, but you just think that they're going to sound better on it. So you're like, hey, man, I kind of want you to do this. Would you be willing to do Absolutely. this for me? Absolutely. You know? It's like, don't get it twisted. I work with you enough. Like, shit, I might fuck around, give you a verse or something like that just yeah. off of the, the, the relationship. But it got to it gotta get there. Yeah, speaking about working, where do you work? Like, where do you? Where so do you I'm record? actually a man. Uh, oh, as far as like, do my music? Yeah. Okay. Uh, for music, I record in a few different spots. Shout out LJS. Uh, that's Lock Jaw Studios. For y'all that don't know, uh, shout out Maze on the Beat. I got a few songs uh, with his beats. Maze on the Beat. Hold Maze on. on the beat. Yes. He's not from this area, is he? There's a guy out here. His name was Mazin. Nah, Maze on All right, the Maze beat. on the Beat. All right. Yeah, Maze. Sure. Like you never Maze. know. 
That's tough. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, nah. Both fire. Um, uh, I've recorded in a few different places, actually. Um, I wish I had, like, his actual official, uh, uh like, name. And I don't want to just say his government, because that's, that's, that's I a hear lot. you. I hear you. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, but shout out my man. Oh, shit. Shout out my man, Blaze, like. Do you record with him? Yeah. His like, his studio, his home or something like that? Yeah, like I recorded a couple of tracks with him too. Like, That's awesome. Yeah, man, I just like to see where people work, where they work with, you know, because, you know, I, I just want to say, hey, you know, you just listed out four other people who probably, if they want to come on a podcast, you know, I would love to get them on a podcast. Oh, yeah, you know, absolutely. Because you don't, you can't do it yourself. Oh, yeah, no, no. You know, I mean, you can, but you're going to be tired and burnt <laughs> out. <laughs> right. There's a lot, that, a lot of energy that gets burnt doing a lot of things like mm -hmm. that. And that's why you got to create yourself a team like the boys back here in the yeah. back right now. We got Nezzo, who is one hell of an engineer, as always. Shout out to him, always. Um, so anyway, so I want to go back to your bars, right? Because I was just like, I've really dissected your bars. So I'm on, I'm on Instagram, and you're doing one of these speak up freestyles, okay? Mm -hmm. And you said something that was like, oh, shit. I was like, you did not say that. So... <laughs> The flow ain't common. They conceded more than Kanye can. You said you said. That. Oh, um, yeah. the flow ain't common. They condescend more than Kanye can. Yeah, I was like, what? I'm like, yo. Um, so, I mean, that that's that, that's just the truth. Like, there there are people who like Kanye is a very condescending dude. You know, like, like he just is. Like, it, it's it's certain things you got to accept with like the reality of a person. Yeah, and like. Sometimes, like, when you're dealing with people, you start thinking, like, damn, like, you really like Kanye. You really, <laughs> like, you really bugging. You, you like, really fuck with Kanye like that, huh? Yeah, like, yeah, like, all right. Like, like you a condescending motherfucker. All right, my fault. <laughs> all right, like, so that's just what it is. Like, uh, okay, yeah, no, I thought I just heard that bar, and it was another alliteration, man. It was just another condescending Kanye, Kanye can. I was like, I'm like, common what? This guy's crazy. Common <laughs> flow. Common flow. You know, because... They right. condescend. Uh, wait, the flow ain't common. They condescend more than Kanye can. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, me personally, I will say about Kanye, um, I enjoy his music from time to time. Okay, it depends. Some of the songs oh, are no, still no, no, bops, no. bro. But I can't. You know, I'm not gonna sit here and stay. I fight with the man's. Yeah, right. And that's <laughs> what I'm saying. Like, I would never. If I ever had a moment to like be around Kanye on like some, and not even on no fan shit. Like just just to like have a regular conversation and be around Kanye on in a regular atmosphere. I'm not arguing with that man. Like, it's no reason. There's no reason. Like, he's just gonna he's gonna say one thing, and then like ten minutes later, within another argument, he's gonna say another thing. And it's like it's, it, he's just doing it to poke. He's not looking for the initial like the full reaction. He doesn't care about the reaction. He's just poking. Mm -hmm. So don't don't even feed into it. Yeah, he he's uh unfortunately off the rails. You yeah, know, he's, just... his mental state is, yes, but his music state is amazing. Yeah. Like, that's 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 the kind of things that come with it. Did you watch the the documentary that he had on Netflix? I did not. Okay. I, did oh. not. I, I recommend watching that. Uh, I don't know if you, if nah, you're interested I, in nah, watching I Kanye. Kanye. I fuck um, with Kanye as a person as well. Like, I know, like, there's a lot of shit in his life that, like, one thing I understand, and this is just, like, as men, we, we need to understand this. Like, there are times when like your life will overtake you to a point where like you're not you're not thinking about what's best for you anymore. Like he he's we're seeing the point of Kanye where he's been past that point. We 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 watched our, us drive him to insanity. Like we're past that now. Like he's at a point where it's like all right, y'all niggas know I'm crazy. Yeah, the world know I'm crazy. What do I do now? Like yeah, th that's what we're watching from him at this point. So it's like we 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 don't do we. That's why I said I'm not arguing with Kanye. I'm not putting no energy <laughs> into like the like like trying to get him to understand the mindset because he's not given the energy to want to understand. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's like it's one of those kind of things. Yeah, watching his interviews are pretty interesting. I've, his I've interviews are that, look. You see what he did? Sway had all the answers. Yeah, yeah, Sway had the answers, and Sway wasn't even trying to do that with him. He was just trying to ask him a general question. Yeah, yeah. And Sway understood the objective. Don't argue with Kanye. And he didn't. So. <laughs> I'm just look. My point was proven. I'm just saying. Bring out the answer, Sway. Sway got all the answers. That's man. fucking crazy, man. 
And that's one of the most iconic lines that he's ever said. And yeah, like I said, I, I watched that documentary. You could see him in his upbringing. You know, you could yeah. see the artist in him. And even uh, towards the end of the documentary, they kind of show up to like 2020 type type of deal. And it's still going. It's still oh, he's okay. he's apparently supposed to be releasing another three part eventually. You know, it's just like you see him grow throughout his life. You see him go through the insanity and shit like that. Yeah. And it's crazy. It really is. You know, and it's like that's a double edged sword of being like a creator and everything like that. You know, but you and I were talking earlier and you're like, yeah, you know, I kind of like to keep my circle small. Yeah. You know, and that's and that's like that's great, you know, to be able to keep a small circle because, you know, that you got those four or five people who have your back, you know, no matter what, you know, they'll tell you if you're crazy. If you're crazy. Yeah. (laughs) They'll let you know. (laughs) You feel me? Like and that and that's and I and I would hope that like people who go through whatever the hell Kanye is going through, like. They have somebody in their corner that they could kind of lean on to understand, like, all right, maybe I am tripping. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe maybe I do need to take a step back. But if you ain't got nobody in your corner saying that, you could just go and make bad decision after bad decision after bad decision. That's the difference between the good and the bad friend. To me, the good friend will tell you that you do have a booger hanging out your nose. The bad friend will just let you keep walking around. This is the thing, though. I've had people tell me I was a bad friend, right? And And that's only because I didn't willingly put myself in the situation to stop someone unless... If you're not, like, doing something that can get you locked up, I'm not throwing myself in there. You know, like, if you're not about to, if you tell me, yo, I'm about to go rob these people and you got guns and shit and I see you about to go do it and I'm like, yo, maybe you shouldn't do that. All right, bro, look, put that down, bro. You probably, you're not going to shoot me. Yeah. You, you just going to sit here and you're going to conflict with me. You're going to talk to me. You're going to politic with me. Why Why I got to do that, bro? Nah, I want to go raise hell. Nah, bro, it ain't even worth that. Like, just let's let's talk about it. Mm-hmm. Like, let, like, hear me out, though. Like, I see you looking at it like this, but hear me out. Hear my side. If you don't want to do it after you hear it, cool. Go do what you got to do. But remember, you got responsibilities too, nigga. Yeah. Like, yeah. you feel me? Like, it's one of those kinds of things. That's a real friend. I mean, I wouldn't necessarily say you're a bad friend. I would say you're a real friend. And some people misconstrue that, you know, yeah. for being a bad friend. <laughs> and I'm like, look, I, I don't care if you don't, if you want to go do this, that, and third. I'm just not about to sit here and politic and parlay with you. Like, I want to do it with you. And if I do want to do that with you, we're going to do it in a certain kind of aspect as far as, like, not robbing people, obviously. But <laughs> yeah. Like, not let's robbing dial people. it back. Yeah, let's <laughs> dial it back real quick. But like, if, let's say you wanted to go to an amusement park. Like, and I'm like, nah, I don't really fuck with amusement parks, whatever the case is. But if I did want to jump up and be like, yo, you want to go to an amusement park? You're like, word, let's do it. Yeah. All right, fuck it, we out. Like, mm-hmm. we ain't about to sit here and make, make it an issue or make it a conflict. People will make plans and never fall through. You haven't had that happen to you? Like, yeah, have someone, I ever had that happen? Yeah. Yo. You ever try to plan a, like, a friendcation? Like, all your friends go out? Not even like friendcation. Um, it's kind of, it happens to me more often than not, bro. I'm at this point in my life, I'm 24, okay? I'm at this point in my life where it's just like, I know that I am a great friend when I'm there. Mm-hmm. I'm a bad friend when I'm not, okay? okay. So right. I'll reach out to you, but I'll reach out to you so many times, and if I'm not getting any responses, Bonses. I'm going to literally say F you. Yeah, and then, <laughs> um, seriously, though, but let me tell you this, let me tell you the story. I, I just got a gym membership, right? I'm trying to, get, let's get right. I'm trying to get right again, you know? And, uh. I got the gym membership with my two friends, and I was like, yo, I hit him up earlier in the day. Yo, I'm hitting the gym, going to go bite them weights. Anyone want to come through? No response. I'm like, all right, whatever. They must be busy. I'm going to just take it as they're busy. Bro, I'm leaving the gym. I'm leaving the gym. I see homie in the fucking court. I went, yo, fuck you, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I went, you a fake-ass friend, bro. Fuck you. And then I saw, and then as I'm walking out, um, you know, I'm, I get in my car. I do a circle around the parking lot. I see my other homie. I'm like, yo, you too? Yo, fuck you too, yeah, bro. Like, but it's like, like, you know, it's it's kind of... You could have hit me up for this. Yeah. I'm, I'm coming to ball. I for the me, ball. for me, it's just, yo, just tell me I'm going, I'm going to be going there at seven. I really don't care. You don't got to just text me back. It's kind of weird if you don't text me back and I show up and I get there and you're there. And it's just like, and the two of you are there. Nonetheless, we're in a group chat, all three of us. It's kind of weird. You know what I mean? So like. <laughs> Dang, keeping, that is kind of. Yeah, wild. I got, I got right. snubbed, dude. It was fucking weird. Um, <laughs> But that like, that goes with a, a smaller circle and shit like that. Like I have a group of friends who I went to high school with, right? They're all gang. We all say gang. We got a handshake. It goes something like this. Like right. So nonetheless, it goes something like that. And, uh, you know, I still do it when I see him and pop up with them. But it's like, I don't chill with them. And I am I'm, I tell them, like, I'm still in the circle. Like, you guys still see me. Be like, yo, Kev, what's up, gang? You know what's up, homie? Right. But I'm on the outskirts of the circle. And I am completely okay with that. You know, it, yeah, it hurt. Nah. It hurt first. You know? That shit hurt. Yeah. Um, And that's why I moved out to Scranton, you know? Nah, moved out to Scranton, got away. Uh, 
it hurt hard hard pill to swallow but it's that part of you know maturing and growing up and finding out that you're going to be okay by yourself and yeah that's kind of uh that's kind of where you have to have to grow at you know like and, and not even you per se but like just in the world like anybody going through anything like that like where where you're trying to figure out if if acceptance is is, is a factor no you're as accepted as you need to be by yourself mm -hmm. you can accept yourself then the world will accept you it's a simple math yeah yeah i like that if you can accept yourself the world will accept you i like that so man you're you're pretty deep man you got some you're you're, you're wise up here in the knowledge bro you really I, are i mean man look i i, I lived man like you know like i'm not <laughs> shout out my man uh john bold you know shout out my sister ace too ace live you feel me but um yeah nah john bold said it best like he said it uh he said uh in one of his interviews recently he was like i'm real i said i felt that nigga like i felt <laughs> that like because like now nah, like people claim they do left right this that whatever they want to say they do but did you learn from it mm -hmm. are you still currently doing it are you still active in it are you are, are are you like i could respect two kinds of people people who are still currently in their their circumstance because they have to fight and endure and, and keep going through it and people who learn from their uh circumstance that means that you learned something you turn yourself into something and you kept going and i can see the growth within you those are the two kinds of things i respect the most mm -hmm. if you're not doing one of them two things and and i'm not sitting here saying oh i respect the people who are gang bangers and out here killing shit. no but i could have a certain kind of respect for you because you're seeing things that you may not have wanted to see in your life. You may not have thought your life was going to turn out that way. Mm -hmm. You know, like you didn't, some, sometimes they didn't ask to be in them circumstances. That's just what it is. No one thinks about those portions of their life. They had dreams, they had goals, all that shit turned into drill missions and other kinds of things wow. like that. That's a great comparison, drill mission. <laughs> you feel mm -hmm. me? Like, mm -hmm. so it's like, it's, it's, it's life. Mm -hmm. That's just the reality. Like, so I respect people who are figuring it out or, actively having to face those circumstances and of course like i'm not saying like the people who starting it off i'm talking about the ones who look we're not gonna do nothing unless they do something once we once they do something we lit mm -hmm. them them kind of people because they're the ones trying to mind their business they're trying to make their money to do something with it yeah they're not trying to sit here and fight jump out the window be on the porch left right like no one's trying to jump outside to do that <laughs> yeah no and that's like that's you know if you have those people around you who are you know they want to stay out the way and that's perfect you know just stay out the way Let stack your bread, do what you got to do and keep your head down and at work i have a strict tunnel vision like because honestly i don't care about anyone there like i could look but like just, boom prime example just keep walking. i see you at work i don't know him, but i respect him you know why because every day he walked past me he don't say nothing <laughs> every single day i'm dead serious he's consistent he's consistent <laughs> right like dead serious he's consistent he not he not doing none of that like he not doing none of the extra fake be your friend he not politicking which he's in your face having a good conversation for two seconds hey how you doing what's up man and i'm out <laughs> <laughs> that's it like you know he's oh, figuring man. himself out he's figured himself out that's all i'm saying yo i'm sweating bullets right now bro wearing this sweatshirt and this fucking jersey i think it's the jersey that got oh, you oh my god man i gotta turn on the ac in between here because we're gonna get into tea time coming soon we're gonna have jay lasso here we're gonna we got some beats over here we're gonna have some fun with it i might even try to freestyle you know i'm not an artist but i'm gonna do my best you know so uh that's a shout out to tea but as i'm saying uh we have tea time coming up uh you know tea shout out time. <laughs> Not, remember, it's not brought to you by Arizona Iced Tea, but inspired by Arizona Iced Tea. Today's flavor for me will be RX Energy Herbal Tonic. I got a kiwi strawberry, John. That a boy, that a boy. Um, but, you know, we're still in the middleman podcast mode, and I want to ask you if you could uh, t explain any details of any projects coming up, anything that we could look forward to. Um, so I do have a few songs. Um, I put one on my Instagram before I actually uh, uh, hit you up and actually found out about the podcast and stuff. And I guess a lot of people want the song uh, Talk To You that I have out, uh, that I've, writ I've written. And fuck it, I told him, yeah, I'll drop it. So okay, uh, I want to sell you probably end of January to expect Talk To You. It's a good song, uh, real good vibes. Um, I don't have any kind of concept as far as what a project is in right now. Uh, me and my, my constituents, you know, mm -hmm. like... We got to go through a, a, a thorough process on how they want to roll out me as an artist and stuff like that. So we got we got some work to do as far as figuring awesome. out what we're doing. But 
Um, I could tell you this much. Uh, I do know I have maybe a solid like five songs for, for, for guaranteed like coming out. Awesome. For looking guaranteed. forward to it. Um, because, you know, I was looking at a lot of your work and it's a lot of singles, you know, and I'm I'm looking forward to an album one of these days. You know, you ever hear Joey Badass? We want an album. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I know a lot of people like want like those kind of con uh, like concept albums and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I, at some point, I'll get more into those, like as far as like releasing them. I just want to make sure, like I said, like I'm just building it right. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Of course. You know, you want to you don't want to rush into anything and, and not even just rush into anything. It was more or less. So double and back for a quick second like into backpack rap um a lot of it was learning and like learning the business side of music like understanding like how to negotiate yourself how to how to put yourself in better uh circumstances with 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 your music mm -hmm. so i want to just make sure when i start releasing and unraveling my music that everything that i do will have a purpose will Everything I do will have something that people could walk away with. Yeah. Not, not 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 a purpose for me, but a purpose for everyone. Like I'm a win, but y'all gonna feel like y'all won too. You feel me? Like I'm a win, but y'all gonna feel like you're right next to me while I'm winning. Yeah. And that's how. And that's the that's the point. And and you wanna how talk you, to them. You feel me? Like yeah. Yeah. Like that's kind of like the point and in, in feel that I aim for. Like I don't want to sit here and feel like I can't sit here and relate to. The person that I that 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 wants to see me do good, yeah, on the yeah. stage, you know, like mm -hmm. that's hard. That's kind of weird. Like I've been to stages where people don't know me, but they want the best for me. Yeah, that's great, man. That's absolutely fantastic. It's, it's, it's cool, but mm -hmm. like it's also strange, like because you don't know them. Yeah, like, <laughs> yeah, like yeah. But I want them to like I want that feeling to to kind of stay consistent. Like I've had a I had a lengthy uh, experience with music so far, as far as like just within the like what eight. 10 years that I've been doing it. Yeah, I think I saw some projects or uh, singles dated to like 2015. Yeah. You know, way back, way yeah. back when. Yeah, that was a, uh, I don't know if you checked out uh, Food for Soul. I don't think I did see Food for Soul. I don't okay. think I saw that one. I probably should have put that on, uh, sent that to you. That was a, uh, that was one of like my, that was like. You mentioned my, it, but I don't think you sent it to me. Now yeah, that I think no. about it, yeah, Food for Soul, because I was like, oh, Food for Thought, Food for Soul. Yeah. Love it. Yeah, it's just tough. <laughs> yeah, I don't think I sent that one. Dang, my bad. But, it's all right. Yeah, nah, it, it, it was like, that was when I was really learning music, mm -hmm. but I, I, like I said, like, I didn't realize how good I was. So, like, I listen back to those tracks now, and I'm like, yo, I was actually pretty fired. Like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know that. Like, But now you look, you know, and you're like, I'm a, I'm a lot better now, too. Oh, yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. I, I would, like, so, some of the some of the raps was, you know, like, I wouldn't call them elementary, like, at all, <laughs> in any standard. It's just, like, I didn't have that 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 prestige that that uh precision that, that i do have now yeah like, you, you know you, the way you articulate your words bro it's like i honestly feel like this man reads a dictionary every day <laughs> that nah. ass i'm like no nah, he's got a good flow going with him and you know alliterations are really really cool in my eyes you know so i'm i, I appreciate your lyrics you're a great lyricist bro like oh, i said man, you're a great lyricist that. um and you know i'm i'm really happy that you reached out you know on me basically call, calling out and it's kind of crazy bro how did my page even come across your <laughs> yeah, like, because I know I posted um, that on my story, I think. Yeah, yeah. Um, So I I be researching, man, like, things people got to do, you know? Like, yeah, no, that's I, good for you, man. I just, like, so, honestly, I don't really have a full answer on how I came across it. But, like, I know I seen, I think I seen a picture of you with Kafar. Okay. About his novel. Yeah. And I was like, oh, yeah, that's dope. And then... <laughs> Before that, shout out Kafar. Kafar Myers, hard dude, bro. Like that's fire. The guy's great. At any time, man. His music's dope. That's that's like his music is hard. I definitely fuck with his music. But um But um yeah, like I seen that, but like I didn't like click on to like there was no link to click to. So I was like, yeah. all right, well, all right, cool. I don't know what that's about. And then like I hit the explore page and then I seen something say the middleman podcast. I'm like that is hilarious. That's cool. <laughs> um, yeah, so let me click it. And then I clicked it, and then it turned out to be the same. And then I checked your pictures, and it was the same picture with Kafar. I was like, word. All right. That's awesome, man. You reach out. That's, that's actually really cool. I guess Instagram was working in my favor that day. Yeah, like, definitely. And, uh, yeah, you know, you came through. You and I had a conversation before. And, like, the way you 
presented yourself, this is great. I need people to understand this because I have people coming, like trying to come on the podcast, right? But the way you presented yourself, you you sent me your work immediately. Like that was the first thing you were like, "Hey, man, like uh, my name is Astro J La Soul. Um, you know, I'm trying to do a podcast, uh, and you dre- you sent me two singles." You know, you already sent me something, you know, and sometimes people don't do any of that. And then I'm like, yo, like, if you want to come and have a podcast, like, give me a pre-interview, please, because I'm not just going to let someone come on here. I just, figured, like, you know? I could sit here and, like, do the, like, I hit you up, you respond, and we talk it through. Or I could literally just let my music kind of, like, give you the understanding of who I am and yeah. then, like, let you kind of correspond off of that. Headstrong driven, man. And it was a yeah. good it was a good tactic and it worked really well. And like we had this fantastic podcast and we're actually at the five minute queue here. All which right. at the five minute queue, you know, we started wrapping things up, right? So okay. uh with that being said, um I want to give the the floor to my guests, you know, list your uh, your IG where people can follow you on Spotify, SoundCloud, stuff like that, projects that we could be looking forward to. Any positive messages you want to leave for someone, you know? The floor is yours, Jay. Um, so follow me on Instagram at Astro S O U One. Astro the soul and it's not an L, it's a one. So Astro S O U one. Um that's where most of my updates will come from. You can follow me on TikTok too at Astro Soul with the one. Same exact way. Um That's if, a grind. If you would like, uh that'd be that'd be cool. I'll actually start posting for people who choose to follow because I'm 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 like anti TikTok, but I, I understand what it, <laughs> what it's used for. So we'll we'll make it work. So give me a purpose. You kinda you dig me like uh, also follow me on Twitter at JLaSoul. Uh I believe it's a bunch of it's three underscores. Okay. And uh YouTube. Subscribe to my YouTube. Shit. Why not? J La Soul. Everything J La Soul except for my Instagram. Yeah, and definitely check out his songs. Uh like I said, my personal favorite was one of the ones that you sent me that is on Spotify. I can't remember the name right now. Rotation was fire though. Rotation was a really good vibe. Rotation is turned up. That shit fires you up. Um or... what's the name? What's the name of the song? You sent me two songs. Uh, I sent you Self Love. Self Love. <laughs> Thank you. Self Love. That's the one it was. Yeah, Self Love is definitely uh, one of my one of my favorites. And check him out on SoundCloud. My favorite on SoundCloud was probably Soulless. Soulless and, like I said, Holy Ghost is really, really deep. Holy Ghost wow. is really, really, really deep. That was a good one. Wow. You know, uh, okay, so the dude that was on Holy Ghost, that's my man, John Bowles. He, he's the one that I kind of referenced to, like, and uh, the girl who's singing, like, that that's actually my ex, but her name's Oram. So they both still probably make music. Shout out to both of them as well. Awesome. You feel me? So definitely just want to throw that in there. Um, follow my Spotify, uh, J La Soul, J A Y L A S O U L. And yes, I know I got the L A in there, but I am from New York. <laughs> wrong. It's, it's all right. Uh, don't worry. I'll, I'll tag that all in there for people to see, especially when we post it, you oh, know? Word, word. Um, Thank you once again for coming on the podcast, Soul. Oh, yeah, um, absolutely, man. You are full of soul. And, uh, you know, we're going to have some fun here on Tea Time. You know, we're going to do a little freestyle here. I'm I'm really hoping that this works out really great. <laughs> oh, this should be fun. This should be fun. And uh, thank you for having me, man. Like, I, I, I don't really, like, come out and do things like this. So this is really me getting out of my shell. So this was a dope experience for the first time doing some shit like this. For me. Awesome. I'm so, happy I could provide you with your first podcast experience. Definitely, definitely. That's, that's always great to hear. If I could just give someone their first podcast experience and it's like, it's awesome. Word, you know, word. Um, it means that there's not that large of a demographic for podca- podcasts around. So it's like, you know, just got to get the right people. Hey, doing look, it. man, like I said, I'm the vice president. We're going to make some shit work, man. Love like, it, man. We got, we got some, we got some work to do, man. Like that's, that's all. We I got know. three microphones, bro. We could bring homies in, you know, I could go ahead and acquire a fourth if I need to one of these oh, days. Man, nah, I got to get you over my way too of like, course man you, let me know see, we always eat you know man. mikey's up there i'll go crash at his place <laughs> you know so anyway with that being said stick around for tea time thank you for listening to the middleman tea podcast time. this came out with two t's three two one under the sun got no gun no need to run that's the spying that's the saying bro that's what i say that's it we're done here thank you for listening goodbye thank you.